Welcome to the Deep Dive, your shortcut to being well-informed. Today, uh, we're taking a look at Array Fundamentals in Programming. Our mission is really to unpack how these things, arrays, which seem pretty simple on the surface, are actually, well, a masterclass in software and hardware working together. They unlock speeds that honestly can feel a bit counterintuitive sometimes. Yeah, it really is fascinating. I mean, this fundamental structure, it's basically the bedrock for so much of well, modern computing. It underpins, you know, all these complex data structures and how software even talks to the hardware. Okay, let's dive right in then. So at its core, what is an array? Well, an array, fundamentally, it's an organized collection, yeah. lots of elements, right? But all under a single variable name. And its real power comes from two principles, non-negotiable ones. First is homogeneity. Uh, this means every single element has to be the same data type. Okay, like all integers or all strings? Exactly. Think of it like a bookshelf, maybe. One with fixed slots, all the same size. And it only holds, say, paperbacks. No hardcovers allowed. And second, there's contiguity. The elements are stored right next to each other. In memory, I mean. One after the other, in an unbroken block. Ah, uh, so no gaps in between. No gaps. That tight organization, uh, it's absolutely key. And I guess this strict organization, it's not just about keeping things neat, right? It mm -hmm. unlocks that superpower you hear about mm. the o1 access constant time random access mm. that's the idea that no matter how huge the array gets you can just instantly grab any element no searching needed but uh how does that instant jump actually work like under the hood and why is that first rule homogeneity so vital for the speed Right, so it boils down to some pretty simple math, actually. Most programming languages use zero-based indexing. You know, the first element is at index zero, the second at one, and so on. So to find any element, say, at index i, the system just calculates its memory address. It uses a formula, address is equals base address plus i size of element. Okay, base address is where the array starts in memory. i is the index. Exactly, and size of element is how much memory each element takes up. And that's the crucial part for O1 speed. That size of element must be constant, known, fixed because they're all the same data type homogeneous precisely if the elements could be different sizes the computer couldn't just multiply it have to well step through the array from the beginning adding up the sizes of each element until it found the right spot which would be much slower much slower that would degrade access to what we call on linear time it scales with the size of the array totally different performance profile okay that makes sense so this elegant design the homogeneity and contiguity what does that actually mean for performance out in the real world? Well, connecting this to the bigger picture, arrays are like the Lego bricks for so many other data structures. Think stacks, queues, hash tables, even strings are often implemented using array-like structures underneath. Right. But the array's real um, secret sauce. It's the incredible synergy it has with the CPU hardware, specifically how memory and caching work. Caching. How does that play in? Okay, so when your program asks for one element from the array, the CPU doesn't just fetch that single piece of data from main memory. That would be slow. Instead, it grabs a whole chunk of adjacent memory, a cache line, and pulls it into its super fast cache memory. Ah, because the array elements are contiguous, all lined up. Exactly. That's called spatial locality. So when you access array five, it's very likely that array six, array seven, array eight, and so on are now already sitting in that fast cache. So the next time you need the next element. It's a cache hit, instantaneous access practically. The CPU often even tries to guess what you'll need next that's prefetching and loads it proactively. This makes just walking through an array, iterating over it, one of the absolute fastest things a computer can do. Wow, okay. That hardware synergy is powerful. So with that kind of speed for iteration, how do arrays really compare against other structures like, say, linked lists? Textbooks yeah. often mention linked lists having O1 insertion, which sounds great. Yeah, that's a common point, but it can be a bit misleading in practice. It's true that if you already have a pointer to the exact spot where you want to insert in a linked list, the insertion itself is O1 just rearranging a couple of pointers. But you have to find that spot first. Right. And finding that spot usually means traversing the list from the beginning, which is an ON operation. So the total time is typically ON. Hmm. Okay. So similar to inserting into an array where you might have to shift elements, which is also ON. Yes, but here's the kicker. In the real world, array insertions, even with that ON cost of shifting elements, often beat linked lists performance-wise. Really? Why is that? Cache performance. Shifting elements in an array is usually done by highly optimized, low-level memory copy routines. 
Think Minkapi. These operations are incredibly fast and cache friendly because they work on contiguous blocks of memory. Linked lists, on the other hand, they're terrible for caches. Each node could be anywhere in memory. Accessing the next element means chasing a pointer, likely leading to a cache miss, forcing a slow trip back to main memory. Huh? The pointer chasing kills the cache advantage. Pretty much. So unless you have a very specific constant need to add or remove elements right at the very beginning of your collection frequently, dynamic arrays, the kind that can resize, usually offer better overall performance in practice. So it's way more than just a simple box for data. The array is this uh, testament to really clever co-design, software structure meeting hardware reality for incredible speed. Indeed. I mean, for the vast majority of cases where you need fast access, especially iterating through a collection, the array static or dynamic, it really remains the go-to optimal choice. It's indispensable. So thinking about this deep dive, how might understanding arrays at this level, you know, the hardware interaction and the trade-offs, change how you look at the code you write or see every day? What really stands out to you now? 